Hello, and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is another video in the ESB32 series, and today we will see another peripheral, the I2C. I2C, or I2C, or IIC, stands for Inter-Integrated Circuit, and it is a bus interface connection protocol incorporated into devices for serial communication. In order to show how the I2C works, I am going to interface a very famous LCD1602 display with the ESP32 today. I have already made a video explaining how I wrote the LCD I2C library, so if you are interested in knowing the details, please check out that video. So this is the library we will be using today. It basically uses the I2C to interface the LCD with the MCU. This is the STM32 related function, which writes the data using the I2C, we will change it obviously as per the ESP32. The LCD is connected using the PCF8574, which is basically an I2C expander. Here are the data, and clock pins for the I2C connection. If we check our ESP32, it has GPI022 for the I2C clock and 21 for the data. We will be using these pins to connect to the PCF. You can see the PCF is attached to the LCD. The two pins from the PCF are connected to the ESP32. They are the data pin, which is the green wire connected between the SDA of the PCF and the D21 of the ESP32. And the yellow wire is connected between the clock pin of the PCF and the D22 of the ESP32. We need to give 5 volts to the PCF, for which I will use an external supply, since ESP32 doesn't have a 5 volts output. All right now we have established the connection, so let's create a new project in ESP IDF. We will use an example template, so go to peripheral, I2C, and let's use this I2C simple template. Let's rename this to I2C LCD. So the project is generated successfully, and here we have our main file. Before we proceed, let's build it once. Make sure you select the correct MCU from here. Alright the build is successful without any errors, and if the main file still shows error, just click at some empty place, and press enter. Since this is an example template, it has some functions configured for the MPU6050. Let's delete them all. All right here we have the function to initialize the I2C in master mode. We will edit this function a little. Here we have to provide which I2C we are using. Since the board I am using has only one I2C, so this must be the I2C0. Next we have to input the data and clock pins. Here you can see, the data is pin 21, and clock is pin 22. Next parameters sets the pull-up feature for these pins. Since we are not using any external pull-up resistors, Let's keep the internal pull-up enabled. The last parameter is the clock speed. 100 kHz is enough for the LCD to work, you can also set high speed mode with 400 kHz. This basically depends on the device specifications. Alright let's delete these defines from here. In the master initialization function, after defining the parameters, it configures them using the function configure parameters. And finally it will install the I2C driver. This function takes the parameter as the I2C number, which in our case is 0, the I2C mode, which is master, the length of the RX and TX buffers, which is not needed since we are using the master mode, and the buffers are only required in the slave mode. The last is the interrupt flag, which also we are not using today. So the buffer lengths should be set to zero. This will install the I2C driver, and we are good to go with our LCD. 
Let's delete the MPU related functions in the main. So inside the main function, we are initializing the I2C, and once it has been initialized, we will log the success message. Now let's include the library files. You can just drag and drop them in the main folder. Open the i2c lcd.c file, so that we can modify it. Remove the i2c handler definition. The slave address for the PCF is 0 cross 4 e. The data will be written to the lcd in the similar manner, but we just need to change the function to write data using ESB32. This part will remain similar across whatever controller you use. Now let's see what functions are available in the ESB32 I2C library. I2C master write to device, the parameters are the I2C number, the device address, the buffer we want to write, the buffer length, and the timeout for the function. This function should work for us. Also note here that the device address is being shifted to left by one position. This info will be needed later. Alright let's use this function to send the data to the LCD. I am defining the error variable. The first parameter is the I2C number, which is zero in our case. Then we have the slave address, which is defined here. Next is the buffer we want to send, that will be the data t itself. The buffer size is 4 bytes. And let's keep the timeout to be 1 second. This function will return 0 on success, and I guess minus 1 if it fails. Anyway if the error is not 0, we will log this on the console. For this, we must define the tag first, as it's defined in the main file. And now we will log using this tag, that there is some problem in sending the command. The same functions will be used, to send the data also. So that's all we need to modify in this library. In the LCD header file, remove the STM32 inclusion. Let's build it once. We have errors regarding the use of I2C number. This is because we haven't included the I2C driver yet, so let's include this in the LCD library. One last and very important thing. In order to include a library in the project, we must register it in the C make list file. In this IDF component register, we will register a new source file, i2clcd.c. Alright let's build it again. Since we have registered a new source, it's going to build the entire project again. And you can see, the errors regarding the inclusions are gone now. I forgot to change this delay function. Whole delay is used to provide delay in milliseconds, so we need to use an equivalent function here in ESB32. You sleep is used to put the MCU in sleep, but this takes the argument in microseconds. So change all the delays to you sleep, and modify the parameters. We also need to include the header file for this usleep function.
So everything is fine now, and our library is ready to be used with the ESP32. If you are only using ESP32, you can just take this library, include it in the project, and modify the CMakeList file. As I said, I will explain the library in the next video. Now we will use this library to print something on the LCD. In the main file, include the LCD header file. Now in the main function, first we need to initialize the LCD. Remember the I2C must be initialized before we initialize the LCD. LCD put cursor will put the cursor in the zeroth row and zeroth column, which is in the beginning of the top row. We will send the string, hello world, to this position. Then we will put the cursor at the first row and zeroth column, that is in the beginning of the bottom row. And we will print another string there. That's it, let's build the code now. There are no errors, so we will run it using the run configuration in the IDF application tab. We will also check the logs to see if there is any error. Make sure the serial port is correct here. The log is showing errors in sending commands and data to the LCD. Remember we defined them in the I2C LCD source file. All right the error is because of this address. This address is 8 bits long, which include the read or write bit also. Since the address here is shifted left by one place, means the ESP32 functions also take the 7 bit address just like Arduino. So we will shift this address to the right by one place, making it a 7 bit address. All right let's build and run the code again. You can see in the console, there are no errors this time. The LCD is displaying our strings, hello world in the top row, and from ESP32 in the bottom row. So things have been working pretty good so far. Remember that the LCD can only print ASCII characters, so if you want to display numbers, you need to change them to respective ASCII characters first. For example, if I want to print any number, First of all I need to define a buffer, where I can store the converted ASCII characters. We will use sprintf to change the number to the characters. Then simply put the cursor where you want to print the number, and send the buffer to the display. You can see the number is being displayed on the LCD. Similarly, say if we are displaying the float value, we need to change the formatting in the sprintf, and the rest will remain the same. The LCD is displaying the float number as well. Basically it can display anything in the ASCII format. I hope you understood how to use the library to display the data on the LCD. This is it for this video. You can download the code from the link in the description. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.